Aloha full sailors, Sailor Bo here. Today I'll be interviewing the young, beautiful, talented Crystal Sunberg Ginell, who has a degree in fine arts and now works as a graphic designer. All right, let's get right into it. So Crystal, what do you see as the role of the visual arts in society today, particularly in your profession? Um, I suppose to me at least, visual arts has always been used as a way to encapsulate emotions or express ideas. Humans love to feel, and art in all forms helps inspire feelings, good and bad. It makes us feel alive, I guess. Unfortunately, though, I think in today's society, visual arts is too often hijacked by capitalism. I'd say at least 80% of the art I see today is used as a way to manipulate our emotions or reasons into buying a particular product. It's art as advertisement. As a graphic designer, I definitely contribute to that. But then there's the other end of it as well, the artwork of the citizen. And I think in many ways, the street art, web art, web comics, even tattoos can make just as big of an impact concerning more important issues like anti-war, um, racism, women's rights, than the influence that the Nike symbol can make on like a high school soccer team. Awesome, awesome. New communications and media technology make imagery almost instantly available. So do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on your field? That's tricky, because I think it kind of does both. On one side, art is reaching more people, inspiring more people, and even influencing more people to become artists than I think it really has be been able to before. On the other hand, the massive amount of art that's now available does weaken the perceived value of art in general. I don't mean that art is worth any less than before. What I mean is that people believe they can get it for nearly nothing. Bloggers like to rip art from DeviantArt. They publish it on their blog all the time for free without crediting the artist. I just recently heard a story of a new game company basing their entire game style from a piece of fan art that they didn't pay for or credit the young artist for. You also have nowadays something called crowdsourcing like a company called 99designs, which has hundreds of designers design a work and allows the person receiving the work to pay for only one design. So you literally have hundreds of designers working for free. And this is not underground, it's extremely popular and it's growing. Um, the author of A Purpose Driven Life had his new cover designed through 99designs. There were 700 designs that were entered and only one designer got paid for it. So you have these designers that are getting completely ripped off. You also have brilliant artists being buried beneath the mass amounts of artwork put out every day. So it's hard to find the new and brilliant artist of the day. But I do believe that the benefits really outweigh the negatives. The negatives are mostly concerning money and finances, while the benefits really concern much bigger issues, like human rights. Great, great. What popular images do you see that are frequently repeated throughout your industry? I think the biggest element I see repeated are hands. They're used a lot because I think they give a strong human connection without the intensity and intimacy of a human face. They can also express emotions pretty clearly, like from the fist that's used in Obey to the linked hands in the Fair Trade Federation's logo. So who is one of your favorite visual artists? and? Um, you know, what is your favorite art style of visual art? Um, my favorite artist of all time, skill-wise, is Henry Rayburn. I love his use of rim lighting, Prussian blue, and warm highlights. You can really feel the fat on a subject's cheeks, like they're actually jiggling. But I guess my favorite artist of all time, concept-wise and all around, is Frida Kahlo. She made obviously really bold, world-changing statements through artwork. She was a workhorse for women's rights. I know a lot of people would have liked to silence her, but you can't really silence art. <laughs> so that's really a beautiful thing about that. All right, good, great. And the last question is, how has your knowledge of famous artworks influenced your creative process? Well, I'd like to say it's inspired me with something simple, like color theory or compositions. <laughs> But really, it's taught me that my best is never, ever going to be enough. You keep working on it. You can always improve. I don't think that's a negative idea. It's actually pretty liberating. I mean, 
even Da Vinci continued to improve with time. You can only go up, right? Thank you very much for your time, Mrs. Yanell. All right.